Salutations, Niaja. How are you? Who is beautiful? You are. Who is intelligent? You are. Who can do all things through Christ who strengthens you? You are. You can. Um, I believe you're talented. I believe you're gifted. And I think you can be a wonderful mathematician. All it requires is that you put your mind to it. You are amazing. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're working on. So what we've been doing is looking at division, okay? And so division has any division math problem is going to have three primary components. It has a dividend, a divisor, and the quotient, okay? The dividend is the whole number that's being broken down into parts, okay? So if we say 12 divided by, okay? So 12 is the dividend. It is divided by the divisor. It means how many parts are you breaking it down into? The answer is called the quotient, okay? The answer is called the quotient. So, <clears throat> and then remember I told you about inverse operations. One way to help you, um, to help you kind of figure out your division problems is memorizing your multiplication problems or using your multiplication table. Okay, because if we look up here, 3 times 4 equals 12, and 4 times 3 equals 12, because when we multiply, the order of the factors doesn't matter. You will get the same product regardless of how you order the factors. You're going to get the same product regardless of how you order them. If it's 3 times 4 or 4 times 3, it's still 12. It doesn't matter. But when you move to divide, you have to be aware that the divisor then determines how many parts. So if you divide, if 12 is divided by 3, the answer becomes 4. When 12 is divided by 3, the answer is 4. Okay. Now, we said that division problems can be written in two ways. It can be written like this, with the line and two dots. That means division, or it can be this bracket right? That's still division, and it means the exact same thing. The way you read this problem is 12 divided by 3 equals 4, okay? The number inside the bracket is being divided by the number outside the bracket, and the number on top is the quotient or the answer. So the number inside is the dividend, the number in front is the divisor, and the number on top is the quotient. Okay, 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Okay, now let's look at the, um, the other part of that. So then 12 divided by 4 equals 3. 12, 12 divided by 4 equals 3, right? 12 divided by 4 equals 3, okay? 12 divided by 4 equals 3. Okay? So our dividend is inside the bracket. Our divisor is in front of the bracket. And our quotient is on top of the bracket. Or, in this case, our dividend is in the beginning of the number sentence. Our divisor is the second number in the number sentence, or the number after the division sign. And then the quotient is after the equal sign, okay? So 12 divided by 4 equals 3, okay? Let's look at our second problem. 5 times 6 equals 30, okay? And 6 times 5 equals 30. How do we know that? 5, 10. So we do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, okay? So now, we have, we have all of those numbers. So we know, and so again, when it's a multiplication, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how you order the factors, the product will always be the same. Now, I'm not saying the number behind the equal sign is not a factor. The number behind the equal sign is the product. Okay, so if you do five, the factors come before the equal sign. Factors come before the equal sign. Okay, so if you have 
5 times 6 8 was 30. So similarly, 6 times 5 equals 30. Okay? So then now, let's look at the let's look at the inverse or opposite operation. 30 divided by 6 equals 5. Okay? So 30 divided by 6. So if you have a whole 30 and you divide it by 6, you're going to get 5. So then if we look at this problem, 30 divided by 6 equals 5. So it doesn't matter what the, the division sign looks like. If it's the line with the two dots, that's division. If it's the bracket, that's division. Both of them are division. Okay, so don't get confused if you see it on one piece of paper and it has a bracket, then you see it on a different piece of paper and it has the line. It doesn't matter. It means the same thing. You just have to know how to read it. So this reads the same way. 30 divided by 6 is equal to 5. It reads the same way. This is the same thing. 30 divided by 6 equals 5. The dividend is inside the bracket. The divisor is in front of the bracket. And the quotient is on top right of the bracket the, the quotient so your quotient is your answer the divisor is how many parts and the dividend the dividend is the whole number that you're breaking down okay so let's look at this one it's the same thing six times five equals thirty okay six times five equals thirty therefore thirty divided by five equals six 30 divided by 5 equals 6. Why? Because we know that 6 and 5, when you work them together, when you group them, however you group them, whether you have 5 groups of 6 or 6 groups of 5, you're going to get 30. The total is 30. That's how those two numbers work together. So now, if we look at this problem, it's the same thing. 5 is in front of the bracket. 30 is inside the bracket. And 6 is on top of the bracket, okay? So now, 5 is your divisor. 30 is your dividend. 6 is your quotient, okay? So the divisor is in front of the bracket. The dividend is inside the bracket. And the quotient is on top of the bracket, okay? So 5 divided, excuse me, 30 divided by 5 is 6. 30 divided by 5 equals 6. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it and I'm going to set up the next two problems, okay? Okay, sweet, sweet. So now we're going to look at a few more division problems, okay? So again, I, I put the multiplication fact on top, okay? So you know the numbers that we're working with, all right? So then 3, so again, if we look here, 3 times 7 is 21. So that means that 7 times 3 is 21 also, because anytime it's a multiplication sentence, it doesn't matter how the order of the factors, the product will always be the same. Okay, so now let's look here. If we're using these particular factors, 3 and 7, and the, quote, and the product of 21, that means then that 21 divided by 3 equals 7. 21 divided by 3 equals 7. So when you have a whole number or a dividend of 21 and the divisor is 3, the answer is 7. Okay? So 21 divided by 3 equals 7. Now, similarly, 21 divided by 7 equals 3. So when you have a dividend of 21 and a divisor of 7, the answer will be 3. So if you have a dividend of 21 and the divisor is 3, the quotient will be 7, or the answer will be 7. When you have a dividend of 21 and the divisor is 7, the quotient or answer will be 3. Okay? So now, 3 divided by 21 equals 7, okay? 3 divided by 21 equals 7, all right? 3, excuse me, I'm sorry, and I said it more than one time. 21 divided by 3 equals 7. 
21 divided by 3 equals 7. 21 divided by 3 equals 7. Okay? Now, 21 divided by 7 equals 3. 21 divided by 7 equals 3. So now, again, I told you before, don't worry about how it's written because a division problem can be written in more than one way. This is called long division. This will set, well, this is the beginning for long division. These particular program, these particular, when it's written like this, it's usually this, the simpler facts like what we're doing, but I want it, I want you to get used to seeing it both ways so that you don't see it a different way. Like, oh, that's, that's not division. It's different. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay? So now, again, the dividend is inside the bracket or behind the division sign. The divisor is outside of the bracket or in front of the division sign, okay? And the uh, quotient is on top of the bracket, okay? The quotient is on top of the bracket or the quotient is behind the equal sign, okay? The quotient is behind the equal sign. The quotient is behind the equal sign, okay? All right, so now let's look at this one. Four times eight is equal to 32, okay? Four times eight is equal to 32. Therefore, eight times four is also equal to 32. It doesn't matter how you write the factors. If you put four times eight or eight times four, the product will be the same both times, which is 32, okay? So now let's take a look. 32 divided by four is equal to eight, okay? 32 divided by four is equal to eight. So 32 is in front of the, divide, the division sign. And so it is the dividend. The divisor is behind the division sign. It tells you how many parts you're dividing the whole into. So 32 divided by 4 equals a quotient of what? 8. So the divisor in this case kind of says, hey, look, this is how many parts I need. This is how many parts we're making. Um, I'm a 4, so we're going into 4 parts. I'm an I'm a 8, so we're going into 8 parts. Okay. The forwards, the divisor tells you how many parts you're creating, okay? So now, if you have 32 divided by 4 and you get 8, or you have 32 divided by 8 and you get 4, right? So now, let's look here. If it's written in long division, it's going to look like this. The 4 is in front of the bracket. The 32, or the 4 is the divisor. It's in front of the bracket. The 32 is the dividend, so it's inside the bracket. The quotient is on top of the bracket, okay? So four, um, 32 divided by 4 equals 8, okay? 32 divided by 4 equals 8. That means that if you broke 32 down into four parts, there will be 8 in each group, okay? What that means is if you broke the number 32 down into four parts, there will be 8 in each group, okay? Similarly, 32 divided by 8 is equal to 4. What does that mean? If you were to divide, if you were to divide 32 into 8 parts, each group would have 4. Okay? So if you had, let's say for example, like you're going to have a birthday party. And you want to invite 8 friends. Okay? Um, you have, uh, let's see, um, you're, giving them, you're giving all your friends balloons. All right. And so you have 32 balloons to give away. That means if you invite eight people, each person would get four balloons. If you invited four people, each person would get eight balloons. OK, so that's how we would use it in the real world. OK, or let's say hmm, you have 32 Valentine's Day cards. Right. And. You only have a class of eight, but you don't want to bring any home. What would you do? I would divide it evenly so everyone would get one. So if you have 32 and you have eight classmates, every classmate gets four Valentines. If you had 32 Valentines and you only have four classmates, that means 
everybody, every classmate would get eight Valentines. Okay, so that's how that would work. All right, so now let's look at five. All right, these are the math fact. These are the number factors we're working with. Nine times three equals twenty-seven. Three times nine equals twenty-seven. So that's multiplication. Now we know that di division is the inverse or the opposite operation of multiplication. So therefore, when we do 27, if we do 27 divided by 3, we get 9. Okay? 27 divided by 3 equals 9. Now, let's look at it. 3 divided by 27 equals, oh, excuse me. Ooh. 27 divided by 3 equals 9. 27 divided by 3 equals 9. Okay? 27 divided by 9 equals 3. 27 divided by 9 equals 3. Again, the divisor tells you how many parts you need. The dividend tells you how many things you're dividing. And then the quotient tells you how much will be in each group. Okay? The quotient is the answer. The divisor tells you how many parts you, you need to create or how many groups you need to create. And then the dividend tells you how much you're starting out with. Okay? So the dividend is inside the bracket. The divisor is in front of the bracket. The quotient is on top. If, you, if you're writing it as a sentence, reading it left to right, it's the, um, the dividend. Then you put the division sign. Then you put the divisor, the equal sign, and then you put your quotient. Okay, once you solve the problem. You can always use your multiplication table because the fact these are how the factors relate. Okay? Nine times three equals twenty-seven. So that means that if I had um, three group if I had three groups of nine, or if I group nine into three groups, I would have twenty-seven. So if I said, okay, I have 27 and I'm dividing it to three groups, I know that I would have nine. Why? Because I've already learned that if I group nine into three equal, if I, if I have three groups of nine, I get 27. Okay. Three groups of nine will always give you 27. Just like three. Yeah. Just like, or nine. I'm sorry. I'm pointing to the wrong thing. Nine groups of three will give you 27. Just like three groups of nine will give you 27. So this one, I'm, I know that if I had 27 and I said, hey, I got to create groups of three, but I have to use up the whole 27. If that is the case, I would have nine things in each group. Okay. So 27 divided by three equals nine. So if I had the same task, but this time I had to break it down into groups of nine, 27, if I broke it down into groups of nine, I would end up with three groups. Okay, so 27 divided by nine equals three. Okay, so um, we can practice some, we'll do a few more practice problems tomorrow, but at this point, um, I think I've covered it. If you'd like to practice um, independent, well, if you'd like to practice it, you can have your dad set it up the same way, okay? You want to have your multiplication factors up top, your division, and then, so I want to see the division both ways, okay? Use your divisor sign, and then also use the bracket, okay? Because you can see it either way, and the, the answer is still expected to be the same, because it is still the same, okay? All right, so... Um, all right, so that's that. So I love you very much. I love you, I love you, I love you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope the video is helpful. Okay, I love you.